Well, welcome back then. We've already had our first two games fight some crime on a winning streak right now. But he's up against his next player. He's up against another Terran as we had in our first game again from Syx. And we are now loaded into our next game, game number three. Yeah, game number three is set to be a good one. We have Jin down here in the bottom right. And he, of course, is facing off against the defending king, I guess you could say. Fight some crime, top left, and fight some crime, going for the standard eight gas versus Terran build. Nothing crazy, no Nexus first, no proxy gates. And it looks like Jin is probably be probably going to be going for a somewhat standard opener, I would say. I think so, yes. Yeah, it's like a this could very well be a very similar build to what uh Site did. It could be very well a marine reactor expand possibly not as greedy as the three cc as we saw in game one but it could be just as conservative we'll have the marine out to fend off any pro scouts so that nothing can get by just completely unfazed at this probe is coming out very early to be honest yeah the probe will get in here so i just want to talk about probe scouting versus terran as you see a reaper so that's very interesting, and a CC will, of course, go down on the low ground. So whenever you probe scout Terran, new players, there's a couple things you really want to look for. Number one is the gas. If they have two gases, you might be getting cheese, you might be getting one base all in, some sort of 1-1-1 nonsense, but if you just see the one gas, chances are it's some sort of expand build, or at least not a super cutthroat cheese. The other thing, of course, you want to look for is the expansion itself. And Fight Some Crime has seen everything that he could have possibly hoped to see, and he might even get home safely without dying to the Reaper Bolt. I think so. Not dying to Reapers is always a good idea, but we don't have anything in production unit-wise. We have the Stalker out. I think it's going to be Chronoed, but I don't think he's going to be getting time for this Reaper, and he's going to get quite a bit of damage done, and he's going to go completely uncontested, only by this Mothership Core, which is rather slow. And above the ship core, it's one of those things where you're never really going to be able to catch it, but you'll be able to kind of scare it away. So the Reaper will have to retreat here. So there are a few things you can do with the Reaper if you kind of get pushed out as far as scouting goes. And one of those things, of course, is scouting for proxies. Now, it is very common versus Protoss for them to try to hide a Stargate somewhere. But a lot of times the Terran player will just try to consistently run in and scout the main. Now this can be tricky because once the Mothership core is out, it's only going to get worse for you in terms of units. Usually the Protoss will build at least an Adept or a Stalker. And the Widow Mine is going to burrow in the mineral line of the Terran player. So that of course is an anti-Stargate mine, but Blink is the choice here. And this really goes to show how good Fight Some Crime is doing preventing scouting so fight some crime who's currently up two to zero in the series hiding his tech until that scan goes off and vault it looks like he might be doing the same build as you see a lot more gates and no gases at the natural i think so but against a terran in game one we saw him go for this very heavy charge build the blink against terran it's an interesting choice it's very good against these heavy marine plays Maybe not so much when there's Marauders out, and especially not when there's tanks out either, but it could definitely work as we did see Fight Some Crime being a very micro-intensive player. As we saw a masterfully blink micro in that last game. Yeah, and certainly it is a different matchup, and a Robo is coming out here for Fight Some Crime, but I'm very curious to see if Fight Some Crime is just going to make a Warp Prism, make a bunch of Stalkers, and go. Or if he, okay, it looks like he's trying to take a third. He does have a pylon coming out here. Now, in the first game, Fight Some Crime did appear like he was going to take a base and then flummox and fooled me and elected to not take the base. Part of me thinks that Fight Some Crime is a very strong, aggressive player who likes to stay in the driver's seat. Maybe a guy that relies on tricks sometimes. So the Reaper's going to come in here and try to scout. And unfortunately for Fight Some Crime, it will get quite a bit of scouting info done. And it's going to scoot back down into the third, find the pile, or uh, find the probe, and see the base. Okay, so great Reaper scout there from the Psyx player, Jin. 
I think that was a perfect Reaper Scout there. He saw absolutely everything. He saw the size of the army. He saw the Blink finishing up. He saw the Robo in production. And he saw the third just get down as well. And now this Marine's going to be there to scout out this big Stalker army that's moving up as well. Yeah, and the Marine does get picked off. Now, thankfully for the Psyx player, Jin, he does have a tank, a Liberator too, and he does have some mines. Okay, so once you have a tank out, it really limits what you can do with Stalkers, because the Stalkers essentially have to commit or they have to go away. The tank, plain and simple, does too much splash for the kind of blink micro that you're used to being able to do with stalkers to work. So he might try to go in the main here, or he, oh, there he is, huge blink into the main, but a tank is already out, and the tank from the natural is still there, but one comes up, gets hot pick up, but the medevac does hot pick up again and goes down. The tank from the natural is still there, the liberator from the natural is still there, and fight some crime did take quite a bit of damage there. The liberator does siege up, and with Blink's being used defensively, he is not able to blink under it, and not that he would, because you always have to be very wary of blinking into tanks. Yes, and we do have a lot more Stalkers coming in here, and this is looking like a scary little army here for Fights and Crimes. There's not much left here for Jin. There's a Siege Tank, a Liberator, and a couple of Marines, but that's about it. He's having to pull the probes here to be able to deal much damage to this. He's the uh, Stalkers focusing down the tanks there. Marines just in the back trying to do a little damage that they can. Woo! Good, Good with them on here though. Yeah, and one thing that you should note is plus one is on the way and charge is out. So Fight Some Crime does have maybe not necessarily like a plan B to this build. Maybe a, a follow-up strategy would be a better way to phrase that because with plus one on the way, more gates coming up and charge. This is by no means an all-in. Remember, the third base is alive and kicking. If we go to the units tab, he calls it, and fight some crime is one game away from a clean sweep as Jin is defeated there soundly. Wow, fight some crime on a roll here. Super aggressive. As you were saying earlier on, he's just in the driver's seat constantly, all the time with his heavy, aggressive mid-game builds with blink with plus one on the way he was following that up with more aggression it wasn't following it with a macro it was just going okay i'll just add more gates and i'll throw more things at you yeah and he did have the third base that game which if you compare it to games one and two is definitely more macro focused however i think it is worth noting that he did go for blink again and you as you pointed out blink it doesn't really work in the same way that it would work versus terran per se, but he definitely was trying to do a similar thing. He wanted to run around with the warp prism, use it to spot on the high ground, use the warp prism to hot pick up, and he was very aggressive and heavy-handed with his blink stalkers, as though it was a two-base all-in. You notice he went for these huge committal where he blinked all of his stuff in at once. A lot of times what you see Protoss players do is they'll sit up on that low ground kind of where the Terran main base is bordering, in this case, by the third base of Abyssal Reef, and they'll blink half the stuff up on the high ground, half the stuff from the low ground will shoot, and then as the stuff on the high ground takes damage, they'll just blink back. We didn't really see that. Behind the third base, we saw lots of heavy-handed aggression. He really got in there deep, and despite the siege tanks, he was able to take that game. Absolutely. I think uh, Fights and Crime's whole plan there was to try and take down the Terran before he could get those defenses up. When he attacked, he had a siege tank and a liberator and a couple of marines. But they were all in one single position at the front door. However, all those blink stalkers went around the back and got him completely out of position. There was just a single tank that just popped out ready to siege up just in time. But with only a couple of marines out, there was no way he was holding off against the 10, nearly 15 stalkers there. Yeah, definitely. I agree. And one of the things that you really have to just keep remembering with Fight Some Crime and always have to note whenever you watch him play is he is a guy who dictates the flow of the game. He loves harassment. He loves aggressive plays. He likes aggressive builds. He's the kind of guy who will do weird tricks or really aggressive builds just to make sure that he controls the tempo. In game one, what did we see? A build that involved multi-prong harass that allowed him to get ahead. And then in game two, it was a, more of a blink build, but the warp prism gave him the opportunity to do that if he wanted to. And then in game three, again, we see warp prism aggression with a twilight upgrade that'll really help him get in and do the damage. So to me, fight some crime. One of the things that I see consistently in his play is warp prism. 
He likes to harass. He likes to have his harassment options. And if you're a new player, this is actually something that you should try to emulate as long as you can keep your macro in line. Because defending harass, especially multi-prong harass, is one of the hardest things to do in the entirety of StarCraft. And even the very best of the best players can sometimes struggle with it. We see these Terran players, sometimes it looks like they're going to hold the initial harassment very, very well. But what happens is a lot of times you see, okay, that first bit of harassment gets held. But what happens after that, the follow-up harassment, which goes into a different spot, usually the main, really screws the Terran. Because the Terran has a lot of their units in a, def in a defensive position that is all position-based. Whether it be because of some city or because there are mobile siege tanks or because Widowmind support is needed. The Terran player, in general, whenever they have defenses set up versus Protoss, a lot of times they're not very mobile. Because the bio can sit there and hold off a lot of stuff, but when it comes down to these really aggressive, scary pushes, you have to have the support units, the Liberators, the Medivacs, the Tanks, the Mines. So our Protoss player has done an exceptional job of really taking advantage of that. Yeah, he's constantly reading into all of these plays, especially by the Terran players, of how to constantly try and harass, take them out of position. In game one, we saw Psyche just go for this big bio, and it didn't quite have the fighting power that the Zealots, that the DTs had. However, in game number three against another Terran, we saw him out position all of the defensive units, as you were saying. And that just pulled him apart left, right, and center in the main base, in the natural. There was no way he could have been safe against all of that. Yeah, and it something that fight some crime does habitually and something that obviously has had a lot of has had a lot of success and garnered him some victories because as we're about to hop into this game we're getting close we're getting close to potential deciding match because fight some crime is up through to zero he could just clean sweep the Psyx boys here and one of the I things uh, I just want to talk about fight some crime real quick in his warp prism use as we're setting up the fourth game on Mech Depot. Fight some crime throughout this series and this specific little best of seven clan war has been a guy who has used the warp prism extraordinarily effectively. Now initially, a lot of the times, it looks as though the, the player is going to be able to hold. Now it's just worth noting is it is going to be a PVZ for the fourth match. Because you make Warp Prism and the first little harassment doesn't work doesn't mean that you're doomed to just have your harassment not work. One of the things that Fight Some Crime has done well throughout the series is constantly harass and not give up on his Warp Prism. And before we go into this next game, I'm going to have to toss it over to our boy, Felipe, with the sponsor information. Felipe, what do you have for us, buddy? Thank you so much. I want to talk to y'all a little bit about how you can get more amazing Polygon gaming content. If you are enjoying Hope Team League so far, then I highly recommend you go over and check out our YouTube channel where Shaft, the man casting on Tuesdays for this league, has some amazing StarCraft casts that are more an analytical cast that focus on helping you improve your play. And also go ahead and follow us on Twitter where you can get all of the latest updates on events, content on our YouTube channel, and more. With that, I'm going to hand it over to a couple of messages from our sponsors. If you want to be notified when we release videos like this, please make sure you hit the subscribe button. If you don't know where that is, I'm not going to teach you how to use the internet. There's probably no hope for you.